Example 2.7. In this example, we have an aquarium which is full with seawater and it has a depth of about one foot. We need to do some repairs to a damaged corner and in order to do that, we need to find out what is the magnitude of the force that the seawater applies on this triangular area and we also need to find out what is the location of this particular force. Okay, so since we're going to analyze the corner on the aquarium, we're going to draw to see how it looks like. So we're going to exaggerate kind of like the size, the cross-sectional area of the aquarium. And this is the triangle which takes place. We know that this height is about one foot. And we know that this is equal to 0.3 feet, the distance at the base, and that is equal to the same as the height of this triangle. So the first thing that we need to find out is the centroid of this triangle so that we could find out the value of YC and HC. Notice that because the surface is not inclined, the value of YC and HC are going to be the same. We know that the centroid of any triangle is located one third from the base. Therefore, this height is going to be equal to 0.1 foot. So the value of HC, which is the, the point from the water level into the centroid, is going to be equal to 0.9 feet. So once again, one foot minus this distance, that distance is one third of the height. One third of 0.3 is going to be 0.1. One minus 0.1 is going to give you 0.9. And once again, the value of YC and HC are going to be the same because the surface it is not inclined. Once we have uh, the value of uh, HC, we can calculate the resultant force. The resultant force is going to be equal to gamma, HC, and A. We have that the value of gamma for seawater is going to be equal to 64 pounds per cubic feet. We already have the value of HC. And the cross-sectional area, because it is a triangle, is going to be 1 half base times, air, uh, times the elevation. If we substitute all these values into the resultant force, we could find out that the value is going to be 2.59. The second step is to find out what is the value of the resultant um, location. So we start with YR, and YR is going to be IXC divided by YC area plus YC. We already have the value for YC. The only thing that we need is the value of IXC. We go back and look for a triangle and we find it to be equal to b a cube divided by 36. So with the information given, the value of yr for this particular case is going to give us 0 0.906 feet. If we calculate the value of xr, so notice that the coordinate system is going to be located at this point. So this is going to be the x-axis and this is going to be the y-axis. So we want to find out what is the location along the x-axis, and that's why we calculate xr. And that is going to give us i x y c divided by y c a plus x c. What is that the value of x c? Once again, is equal to 0.1. And the value for i x y c is going to give us b square a square divided by 72. If we substitute all the values, xr is going to give us 0 0.00278 feet. Please make sure that you are able to go back, um, understand where the different values for x, for y, c, h, c comes from, how come they are the same, and how the derivation of the, the force and the calculations for YR and XR.